so I am trying to record this lesson in a different way today. I'm recording it on Zoom. Uh, so if anybody on the men's prayer call decides to dial in and test it out, which they sometimes do, I get I get emails throughout the week that say, you know, Gary Yost logged into your Zoom meeting. I'll be like, what's you know, whatever. Uh, so it'll, it'll it'll be interesting. Uh, but I got here to the church and I'm trying to fix my iPad and I'm I'm going through the different support steps and I thought I know. I'll just turn it off and turn it back on. That made sense to me. I turned it off. I turned it back on. It said your iPad will now be unavailable for eight hours. I reset the clock on it. And I was like, oh no, this is this is this is this is a challenge. This is the disaster that I'm that I'm facing. Um, so I'm, I'm doing things a little bit different. We'll see. I'm all mic'd up here. Hopefully this works out the right way. Uh, and if not, um, uh, if it doesn't work out, then you guys are in for a treat. You're in for a treat because we're going to do another law of teamwork today. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to sort of blend the laws that we've looked at over the last month together um, as, as we do this. So uh, let's go ahead. Let's get started. Um, and let's get started as we typically do with core values. We like to start out uh, with the core value that Jesus modeled for us, and it was that Jesus always valued people, right? And I did a different layout here on my board today. That'll probably throw me off more than it'll throw you off. But at Cochrane and Community Church, we have eight core values. Those core values are, I heard Bible and I heard prayer. Worship service. What else do we have? Stewardship. Outreach. Relevancy. What's the last one? Community. All right. And then in any given group, any given group has a set of values. In this group, we have three values. Those values are timeliness, growth, and add value. But add value to people whenever we have the opportunity to do that. All right. Uh, just uh, as a little means of housekeeping here, um, Next week, there's no class. As was shared, uh, service is going to be out at Playland. Um, service is at 10. Um, and so I want to encourage you all to be out there uh, for that. Um, when we get back the week after that, um, I'm working on uh, I'm working on a, a small handful of different uh, of different lessons here. This may this may get shuffled up here. Next week's camp for kids. The week after that, I know what I'm teaching. We're going to be um, we're going to be talking about who's and what's, and I'm going to tell you um, this is this is an exciting lesson. So I want to encourage you to invite somebody uh, to be here for who's and what's uh, the week after uh, camp for kids. Uh, from there, I've been uh, I've been wrestling with this. Uh, uh, with this idea of dogma. And if you don't have a good definition of dogma, I know I didn't, uh, but uh, we're going to, we're going to unpack that. We're going to unpack dogma th uh, that week. And uh, something that's come to me uh, just in the last uh, couple of days is the idea of uh, walking, standing, and sitting walking, standing, and sitting, uh, which those of you who have been with me for a long time probably know where we're going to go with that pretty quickly. Uh, but, um, if not, uh, it's uh, that 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 that's the lesson that we will be uh, looking at there. So um, we have a lot to get to today. Just by show of hands, uh, who did something for the Fourth of July? Like three of you. Yeah. Did you have a Did you have a get together? Family get together? Go see fireworks. Um, who else joined me in being without power on that night? And you, uh, yeah, like yeah, it was. Now I now let me Josh let me let, let, let's have a conversation. How did your kids react to that? Did they lose their minds? Two, two of them did. Okay. 
Yeah. You see, it was, I, I'm, I'm noticing this. How, how, Craig, how, how, oh, you didn't lose power. Oh, so this, that's an irrelevant. Have, have, you, have you lost power recently? No. Not for a while? I'm going to tell you, we lo we've lost power twice in the last, I don't know, six weeks. And it's like, my kids have no idea what to do. Like we, the, the power goes out and Jess comes to me and says, dad, the power's out. I said, I know. Um, um, I'm not, you, you know, I'm not all that sharp, but I, I pick up when the power's out. Right. And, uh, he's like, well, what are we going to do? What, what, what do we have to do? I'm like, well, we wait for it to come back on. And that didn't seem like a satisfactory. I, I think he thought there was a switch. So I don't know what he thought. Uh, we lost power the other night. Taryn went nuts. Uh, she, and that's, that's a technical term. Uh, you, you, you know, it's like, well, what, what, what do we do? What do we do? The power's out, right? Now, whenever I was a kid, you know, the power, this power seemed to go out much more frequently whenever I was a kid. I don't think it goes out anywhere near as, as often as it uh, today as it did back then. Uh, but it was, it was an interesting time. And uh, it was a hot night to be without power. It was certainly a hot night to be without power. Michelle, did you lose power? out? You're, you didn't lose. Man. Okay. All right. So, uh, um, yeah, just it was just Franklin Pike, I guess. That that's it. There was a block that lost power. It was, uh, I guess that was just our lucky day. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, it was a little rough. And so I slept on the couch that night. And I'm thankful for sleeping on the couch uh, at night because I thought it would be cooler there. Um, so anyway, that's where we are. Um, a lot of lot to get to today, and it's some important stuff. Uh, because, you know, when it comes down to it, we now measure our, our, our time between now and the start of Camp for Kids in hours. We are hours away from the start of Camp for Kids. Uh, tent set up is Tuesday. Counselors move in on Saturday. Um, and there's all sorts of final preparations being done. Um, I want to start out this morning, and I just want to jog your memory. Um, who here... Uh, familiar with the story of the fall of Jericho? Well, a few people here, we, we, we know. So as the, uh, uh, as the Israelites were about to move into the promised land, uh, they were going to, uh, I guess I can draw some of this stuff. They were, given, they were given some instructions, and they have, this is after the time of Moses. Moses is no longer their leader, and we now have this guy in charge, his name is Joshua. Uh, Joshua has taken the Israelites into the promised land. And so the promised land looks something like this. Um, and the Israelites, they came out of Egypt, was down here. And they came and they wandered. And now it's time for them to go in. And whenever they, come, whenever they go into the promised land, they come in this way. The first place they hit is Jericho. Now, what's interesting is that, you know, how do you, how do you take down a walled city? And they had this, these instructions to walk around the city uh, for a week. And they walked around the city for a week, and then they blew some horns, and the walls came down. It was a fantastic story. Uh, and you would think that if you had witnessed this, you would have been pretty excited, right? Just, just try to imagine Imagine what it would have been like to, you know, hey, we walked around Jericho every day for a week, and now uh, we, we've done this thing, the walls have come down. And so you, you, I, would, I would suggest that you're, they're probably very much encouraged at that point. Well, now we're going to see what happens next. So for those of you that want to follow along, I would encourage you to turn in your Bible to the, to the uh, book of Joshua. Uh, Joshua chapter 6 tells the story of the fall of Jericho. Joshua uh, chapter 7 tells the story of what comes after. And uh, you know how I like certain words. So uh, when you look at Joshua chapter 7, what's the first word in verse 1? But, oh, uh, when we find this word, it means we're going to do what? We're going to go in the other direction. We're going to go in the other direction. So uh, uh, read uh, chapter 7 with me, if you will. It says, but the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Uh, Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned 
against Israel. Now, Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth-Avon, uh, to the east of Bethel, and told them, go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not weary the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about three thousand went up. But they were routed by the men of Ai, who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. I'm going to call time out here. All right, I got to call time out here. Uh, you know, you go from, you know, this, th th this wonderful miracle of seeing Jericho fall, the, the, the walls crumble. They go and they do this and they have this failure. And as I read this this morning, I thought the people melted in fear. And I, I guess I'm getting my answer now. But I thought, how much, how much ice did they ever see melt? I was, I was puzzled by that this morning because it says melted and they became like water. And uh, just so you know, I, I looked and ice is, there's several other references to ice in the, uh, in the Bible. So apparently they get snow and cold and stuff like that in, in, in some of these places as well. I just always just figured it was hot and desert, like what I mentally picture Egypt. I didn't think of ice. Uh, that's my complete tangent for the day. Uh, feel free to disregard all of those notes uh, at, at that particular thing. Let's pick up at verse 6. It says, Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there until evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the, Am of the Amorites uh, to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Pardon your servant, Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? The Lord said to Joshua, stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen, they have lied, they have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. Go consecrate the people. Tell them, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. There are devoted things among you, Israel. You cannot stand against your enemies until you remove them. In the morning, present yourself tribe by tribe. The tribe the Lord chooses shall come forward clan by clan. The clan the Lord chooses shall come forward family by family. And the family the Lord chooses shall come forward man by man. Whoever is caught with the devoted things shall be destroyed by fire along with all that belong to him. He has violated the covenant of the Lord and has done an outrageous thing in Israel. Early the next morning, Joshua had Israel come forward by tribes, and Judah was chosen. The clans of Judah came forward, came forward, and the Zerahites were chosen. He had the clans of the Zerahites come forward by families, and Zimri was chosen. Joshua had his family come forward man by man, and Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, was chosen. Then Joshua said to Achan, My son, 
give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and honor him. Tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from me. Achan replied, It is true, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua, together with all Israel, took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the gold bar, his sons and daughters, his cattle, donkeys and sheep, his tent and all that he had to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today. Then all of Israel stoned him. And after they had stoned the rest, they burned them. Over Achan, they heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, this place has been called the Valley of Achor ever since. So this is sort of a harsh lesson. Uh, but I think it's a good lesson for us to be able to understand the teamwork principle that we are going to look at this week. And this week we are looking at this principle of teamwork, which is called the law of the chain. The law of the chain simply states that the strength of the team is impacted by its weakest link. Right now, this isn't a revelation to anybody. You've all heard this before. You've all you all know that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. That's that that, that that's pretty obvious. Now, I thought, how can I explain this? And and I don't know why, um, Jamie. I always think of you whenever I do God math. I don't know. Did you at one point say that you liked God math? But for whatever, you don't like God math. Okay. I always think of Jamie. Whenever I say I'm going to do God math, I think, oh, Jamie's going to love this. Uh, but uh, sorry. Uh, probably, oh, you should get math. <laughs> so so let's let's do some math here. And, and, and I want you to imagine a team of five people. All right. Now, your, your, your team of five people, your people can be a zero, a one, or a two. Okay, a zero, a one, or a two. So let's do this very simply. Some, some people think that, that teamwork looks like this. It looks like two plus two plus two plus two plus two and would equal ten. Right? There's some people that would think that way. But what happens is, is that if we have a if we have a weaker link, we might have two plus two plus two plus two plus one, and that would equal nine. That's pretty, still pretty good, right? We'd say that still be, be still be pretty good, but we could have somebody who is super weak, right? They could be a zero on the team, and we could have two plus two plus two plus two plus zero, and that would be equal to eight. And we can fall into this thinking that this is how teams work, but remember, God's math is different. God's math says be fruitful and multiply. So we need to look at this through multiplication. So when we, when we start to do teamwork through God's math, it, it's instead of pl two plus two, it becomes two times two times two times two times two. And that equals Taryn 32, like you said. Is Ethan back there? Which did you have that? You had that, okay, you're, uh, I'm coming at you again here in just a second, all right? I, I, I'm going to need your help on this next one, all right? But let's do the same thing. What if we have somebody on our team who isn't quite as good, 
What if they're not a two? What if they're a one? What if that, that would change our math to two times two times two times two times one, and that equals 16. Well done. You see the impact that a weak link has on the chain. What if this? What if we have a, a very weak link and it's two times two times two times two times zero? Then what do we have? We have a zero. Even, even the postmaster knows that. He, he's actually giving me the hand signals for it. He, he gets it, right? This, this, is, this is how it works. This, this is the law of change. This is the law of the chain expressed mathematically, right? So we, 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 we need to recognize this. I have five lessons. I want you or five, five I, I, what do I call it? I, I have five lessons of the law that I want you uh, to take from, from this story that we look at today. Five lessons. Lesson number one is this. Individual actions affect the group. Individual actions affect the group. When you're on a team, what you do matters. What anybody does on the team impacts the whole team. Right, we want to be out at camp for kids. What if we get to lunchtime and we have a weak team member uh, preparing lunch? Now all of a sudden we got people that aren't eating. Right, it it it, it impacts everybody. It impacts everybody. Um, one person's actions can have far-reaching consequences for the entire team, and that's what we saw in this story. Aiken's actions impacted the entire nation. Um, you know, it highlights the importance of individual responsibility and integrity within a team. Um, for those of you that want to look at look at this, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, we're going to look at the second part of verse 6. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 6 says, you don't know, or, or he, uh, Paul writes, don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? That whatever it is, it spreads and it, 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 and it covers the entire thing. Uh, so individual actions affect the group. Um, number two, there is a need for accountability. I'll give you this. There, 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 there's, there's, there's a law of teamwork. We're not going to look at it this week. I don't know when we're going to look at it, but it's, it's, it's actually a derivative of this. It's not the law of accountability, but it's the law of countability, which means can I count on you on the team, right? That's, that's an important principle for us to look at. But we, we need to recognize that there is some accountability within team because accountability ensures that everyone upholds the team's standards and values when you have that accountability. You know, Joshua's process for identifying and dealing with ache and sin underscores the need for accountability within a team. Hebrews 13, 17 reads, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. The leader has to give an account for what you're doing. So you need to be accountable to your leader. Number three, um, th the third lesson I would po point out to you from this particular story is the importance of obedience and integrity. The story shows us that there is a need. There is there, there is a need to be obedient to the principles uh, such as God's law, such as God's covenant. Right? You need we need to do the things uh, that we are uh, supposed to do, and the integrity um, uh, and and to have integrity in how we do that. Those are necessary uh, for the team to be successful. 
uh, Achan's uh, failure to obey God's command and his lack of integrity caused the entire nation to suffer. One person can cause an entire nation to suffer. He was a li he was a weak link in the chain. And so um, as a team, we must ensure that all members of the team um, are, are adherent to core values and principles that guide what it is that the team does. Proverbs 10.9 reads, Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. 1 Samuel 5.22 reads, But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? God would rather that he God would rather that we follow his laws that we follow his principles than that we would have to repent and turn back right understand that um Samuel would continue uh, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the the fat of rams so um God prefers that we follow his law um Five lessons. The fourth lesson is this, and it's that there are consequences. Right? The law of the chain says that if we're a weak link, um, there's a consequence to being the weak link. Uh, a weak link can undermine the team's efforts and lead to failure. The defeated AI due to Aiken's sin shows how one weak link can jeopardize the entire mission. Joshua was pretty distraught in that story, wasn't he? He, he? he ended up face down in front of the Ark of the Covenant the entire day. He was like, oh my goodness. I didn't think things could get this, I didn't think things could get this bad. That's, that's where he found himself. So one of the things that I want you to understand, because, because there, we have consequences of weak, weak links, we should be focusing on strengthening every member of the team, every member on the chain, right? Um, and that's, I think that's an important lesson for or an important question that we need to reflect upon. How do you get stronger? What are you doing to strengthen your team? What are you doing to strengthen yourself? And I hope you, I hope something comes to mind that says, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. But if nothing comes to mind, I think that's an invitation uh, that um, that we need to recognize that there are consequences if we are going to be weak lengths. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, 26 reads, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. If we have a weak link, it slows every one down. Everyone suffers with that. Uh, the last lesson I want to give you for this, number five, is around restoration and moving forward. You can have a weak link, but what do you do with that weak link? One, you need to address that weakness, right? After and after we address the weakness, then we can we can uh, continue our mission. We can get back on track. Uh, once Achan's sin was addressed, Israel was able to move forward and achieve victory at AI. That's what happens when you when you continue to read in the story. So we need to recognize that teams must address issues promptly uh, to restore the strength uh, and the cohesion of the team to be able to move forward. Um, a couple of verses. Uh, this one, I think, is uh, it's sort of a timely one because we we probably think about this around uh, uh, different holidays like the Fourth of July. But Second Chronicles seven fourteen, uh, it reads, "If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, right? If they will, if they will restore, um, then we will move forward." It says, and and God says, and I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land, right? That's the moving forward part of us. Um, personally, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we, can, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us 
from all unrighteousness. Um, so these are, I, I think this is the, you know, the, 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 the short list of things that we can learn uh, from the story of the failure at AI. But in the New Testament, Jesus, uh, there's a story of Jesus. It's in John chapter six. And if, uh, if you, if you want to go ahead and turn to John chapter six, go ahead and do that. Uh, but you'll find that the first part of chapter six uh, is where we have Jesus making one of his I am statements. Uh, it's in this chapter where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And he goes through and he ha he's having this encounter. And um, I, I, I will tell you that as you read through this, um, there's a lot of people who are puzzled. There's a lot of folks who are struggling as they go through this. Now, just as a bit of background, Jesus has been building up quite a following, right? He's been going around. He's picked up his disciples. Uh, he's he's become a bit of a, a celebrity. People are coming to him from all over the place. Uh, you may remember some stories in the, in the Gospels where it says Jesus sends out the 12 uh, to heal and to cast out demons and do these different things. And if you turn the page, you'll see that he later sends out 72 right? He's got a bunch of people flocking to him. When we get here to John chapter 6, he says, I am the bread of life. And he gives some teaching on this. And the, there's some folks that are struggling with this. And I want to pick up uh, John chapter 6. We're going to read verses 60 through 66. Uh, and if you have a header in your Bible, anybody have a header in that section? What do you, what's, it, what's your header say? Many disciples desert Jesus, right? So let's read this story, uh, verse 60. On hearing it, many of Jesus' disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Verse 62, and I need your help on this one, and especially if you have different translations. I'm using NIV. I want to know how your sentence ends, this next sentence that we read. Uh, verse 62, it says, uh, Jesus goes on to say, Then what if you see the Son of Man descend to where he was before? My text ends with an exclamation point. Anybody have a question mark? There's a couple like I, I so I as, as I was studying this, I was looking, I'm trying I'm trying to figure out how do I best read this to get to, to get the meaning of it. Right. Um, uh, you know, so is, is he asking a question like, well, what if you what if you see the son of man ascend to where he was before? What's that going to do to what you you know, to what you but I think he's I think what he's saying here is also what about all the things you've seen me do already? Right, I, th I, I, I think there's something from that. I'm just trying to trying to understand exactly the spirit of which that is. Verse 63 that he says, Jesus says, "The spirit gives light." Or give, I'm sorry, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. Verse 66. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Jesus had been attracting a crowd. There are people that have been coming around him and he gives them this hard teaching and, and he realizes that, you know, some of them, they're, they're having a hard time handling this teaching. And what happens is these, this group falls away. And I want to encourage you to, to process this through the filter of the law of the chain. Jesus looked at this group and he said, I've got some weak links here. I've got some weak links and he said, you know, I need to remove these weak links, uh, you know, at least temporarily, um, if not permanently, because he knew that if they had stayed, they would undermine the mission that he had the same way that Achan had undermined the mission of the Israelites. 
They, they weren't quite strong enough. They didn't, they didn't have what it took just yet. So to that end, we need to understand that not everyone has to serve on every team. Not everyone has to serve on every team. There's some instances that if you would be on a team and if you would be a weak link, um, then uh, we either need to figure out how we make you a stronger link on that team uh, or we need to not include you as a link on that team. Does that make sense? I, I see some heads shaking here like we're, we, we, that makes sense. You know, and and I, I need to talk to you as from one weak link to another. As a weak link, this is what I want to encourage you to do. Be neutral, not negative. If you find yourself in a place where you are not a, a strong link, if, we, if you find yourself in a place where you are a weak link, be neutral, not negative. Be silent. Don't, 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 be, don't be saying uh, bad things about something else. Uh, you, you know, um, for the last few years, my niche at Camp for Kids uh, has been to go out and wake the kids up. Now, why do I do this? I do this for a couple of reasons. One, uh, whenever I was uh, between my sophomore and junior year of high school, I went to a basketball camp at uh, California University of Pennsylvania. Has anybody been to California University of Pennsylvania? Like, does anybody remember like the hills on campus? Like some of those hills were about straight up, and we had we had we we had a coach, and, it, and he just he wore the shirt. It just said Army, right? And he would come out and he would yell at us in the morning. He would make us go run uphill, uh, and then we would we would all end up on the floor in the gym, crying uh, after that. Uh, that was what, it, and I thought that should be my role at camp for kids. I should go out and yell at the kids and make them cry. That's what I wanted to do uh, to start the day. That, 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 that was how sophisticated I, that, that, that I was. Uh, but I go out and I talk to the kids. I try to get them, try to get them a little bit fired up, start the day, uh, and, 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 then, and then I leave. I, I have, what, 15, 20 minutes, something like that, uh, uh, with the kids in the morning. That's where I add, at least that's where I believe I add the most value. But there is coming a time, and I don't know when that time is coming, when I will not add value you in that role. There will be somebody else that will add more value in a role like that than what I will. And what's going to happen is, is they should take that role. They should take that role. And if, if that role, if, if I am replaced in that role, what should my attitude be? My attitude should be neutral, not negative. It shouldn't be like, oh, well, I can't believe they said this or that they, they said that. That would be negative, right? It would be, you know what? I'm glad they're doing it and be silent. Right. Be neutral. That, 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 that's uh, hopefully that that illustrates uh, my, 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 my point here. Um, and I was hoping Scott would be here today uh, because in 1993, I played in a basketball game at Lakeview High School. And I'm going to tell you right now, I stunk. I stunk. I was awful. I was awful. Now, you know, I, I, up until that point, I had I, I was one of the starting five, and I played so poorly in that game, so poorly in that game. Uh, and after that, I was no longer part of the starting five. That's that's where it was. But I'm going to tell you right now, I had a horrible attitude about it, and I had people feeding me horrible attitudes about it. I had people saying to me, "Well, you know what? You might as well just quit." It'd be no, no one no one would blame you if you quit. Uh, after that, uh, I didn't uh, because I had a uh, I, I had a lesson to learn about becoming a team player, and uh, I I wasn't a good team player at practice yet. I, I I had a lot to learn, and as I as I think, and I wonder if if Scott was at that game because Scott graduated from Lakeview in '93. I'm pretty sure, uh, and he probably was knowing Scott, he was probably throwing hate my way uh, as I played on the court. But uh, sorry, Scott, if you're watching the recording. Um, just a couple of cu couple of things here to uh, uh, as, 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 as we wrap up. Um, one, we need we need to look for opportunities to be uh, to foster individual responsibility. Right. If we want the chain, if we want the chain to be strong individually, we all have to have some responsibility with that. We need to promote accountability. 
right? We, we, we need to be doing the things that we are, that, that we say that we're going to do. We're going to need to be holding up the uh, standards and values uh, of, of the larger team. We need to, uh, we need to operate in integrity with all that we do. And when, whenever we identify weakness, we need to address it promptly. We need to get rid of that weakness just as quickly as possible. And we need to move on. We need to restore and move on. Uh, so as as we can see by by applying the law of the chain, teams can uh, better understand understand the importance of responsibility and accountability and integrity, addressing weakness and restoring strength uh, as as we're setting out to achieve these big, big things. Now, over the last month, we have looked at five of about fifteen or I guess it's seventeen laws of teamwork we've looked at just five of them but what i wanted to do here as we wrap this up because we're not going to go through the, the other laws now i don't know when or if we will do those um, but i i, I want to just recap those here briefly because i want you to see how they knit together uh, now you probably you're, you're all sharp people you've probably have been doing this but i know not everybody has been here every week so i thought let's um let's just go through and let's uh let, let, let's just pull these together and, and let, let, let's uh, uh, let them, let, 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 yeah, let me, let me, let me stutter some more. Um, I want to just go through these so that you can piece them together and you can see how they all connect. I think that's probably, that's probably the non-stuttering way to look at it. First law we looked at was the law of significance, right? And the law, and the law of significance said that one is too small a number to achieve great things. One's too small a number. So if we're going to do something big, it means that we're going to need more than one person. We're going to need some people. The second law that we looked at was the law of Mount Everest. And the law of Mount Everest said that as, as the challenge escalates, the need for teamwork elevates. Or no, as, as the challenge elevates, the need for teamwork escalates, whatever that as we're doing these big things, it becomes more and more important that we have good teamwork. Right? It's if the bigger the project, the more important teamwork is going to be. Uh, week three, we looked at uh, the law of the big picture. Now, the law of the big picture said that the goal is more important than the role. Right. We we, we we said that, hey, every every role that you have on a team, when you're part of a team, every role is so important. And, and, and we, we shouldn't get caught up on what those roles are. Right. Because the most important thing is achieving the mission that we're setting out to do. And so we see that we need people. We need teamwork. We need we need people doing all these different roles. Last week we looked at the law of the niche, which said that everybody has a place where they where they add the most value. Everybody in this room has a place where they add the most value somewhere, somehow, some way. Right now, the beautiful thing is, is that it's probably all different. That's a beautiful thing, right? The the, the, the places where I add value are going to be different than the places where you add value, and you probably say, "Thank goodness," right? You, you, you know, that's that, that that that's what we need. And so we do this. We have we 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 recognize there's a bunch of people. Uh, there's a real need for teamwork. We need that. There's all these different roles. There's a place where there, there's a role for you, right? There's a role where you can add that value. And then today we add to that the law of the chain, which says that the team is only as strong as the weakest link, right? And so we 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 need to be recognizing that the role that we have, we need to be strong in that role. And if we're not strong in that role, we need to step out of the way so that somebody else can can be uh, can 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 operate that role as uh, effic as efficiently and, and as effectively as possible. Now, I deliberately uh, chose these these uh, lessons to lead us up into camp for kids. As Pastor John said, uh, this is one of the largest outreach efforts that we see in these parts. Uh, you know, it's obviously the largest outreach effort of the church, but I don't know how that compares to other churches or organizations around here, but I would think that we would stack up pretty well. I would think, I would think that we would stack up pretty well. 
Um, and while I've presented these kind of in that in that context or to use that as the illustration, I, I want to encourage you today that these principles apply for everything that we do. Whether you're at work, at home, uh, if you're involved in other nonprofits, you know, all, all, all of these things have so much relevancy and importance uh, to, to, to what we're doing. Um, I wanted to give you this encouragement and then it said that there's big things ahead for this church. There's big things ahead for this church, but there's also big things ahead for your work. There's big things ahead for your family. There's there's uh, uh, big things ahead for your relationships. And I want you to you know, in all parts of your life. Don't just say, oh, this only applies whenever we look at camp for kids. This applies tomorrow morning for anything else that you're looking at doing. Um, I want to offer you an invitation and I want to give you this invitation. And the invitation is this. I want, I want to invite you to do or to be a part of big things. And that's a pretty, it, it's a pretty simple thing, but I would also say that it's something that the enemy tries to discourage us from doing. It can become very easy to draw back, right? But I want to encourage you to do or to be part of, of big things because I, I I think there's something magical about being part of a big thing now now the big thing may you know this you may there may be a big thing out there for you to be involved with and it may be you right it, it, it may be your idea it may be your pet project it may be whatever and that's fine but if you don't have one don't you know by all means there's there's other ones out there you can find a place be a part of something big because you will be glad that you did. Um, I um, I came across this quote from Walt Disney, and it and it reads something like this. He says, "It's kind of fun to do the impossible," and I would suggest to you that I think it is. I think it is fun to do impossible things, but that's only going to happen with when teams come together to do those big things. So, what impossible things will you be a part of? That's a question that I would encourage you to consider. I would encourage you to reject the notion of playing small, uh, to reject the notion of playing small, and I would encourage you to reject the notion of doing everything for yourself. Do those bigger things that require a team. Be big, do great things, and do great things with good people. Th 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 those will be some wonderful memories uh, to. Um, uh, to to uh, be able to attach yourself to. And I also want to remind you that this is exactly what Jesus did. He did. He did some great things with some good people. He 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 had he he had a uh, he had a significant mission, did he not? And a very significant mission. And he recognized for this to happen, it was more than what he could do. so he needed a team. And he, 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 had, he had to get his team together, right? And he had to build teamwork in, and he developed his team over the course of those three years. And he had to keep reminding them because like they would get distracted, right? They would get thrown off of what the big picture was. There would be times where, there, like you, we, we, can, we can probably think of some stories where Jesus is like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe you are not getting it yet. Right, uh, I'm sure there were some frustrations that he dealt with, uh, with with his team, and I and I tell you that because you should not be surprised because there will be frustrations that you will deal with with your team. Right, I I I think that's a I think that's a fair thing to say, but what he did is he is he found places for each for each member of his team, right, and 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 they 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 all got strengthened and they did wonderful things, especially after he ascended. Right. That I, I think there's I think there's some wonderful lessons and parallels that we can we can see there and to recognize that these are lawful processes that we can be involved with as well, should we choose to accept that. So with that, uh, I'm going to wrap up today and then this particular multi-week study with these three letters, ACT. And as I ask most weeks, uh, there's a few weeks that I forget, but as I ask most weeks, based on what you've learned today or what you've learned over the last month, what action will you take? What change will you make? And is there something that you learned that you can teach to somebody else 
for your sake and theirs.